Hello! In this video, we will take a look at how to update an already published application. I choose one of my apps called Smart Unit Converter for demonstration purposes. We can see that the current internal version of the app is 4 and the version that the users will see is 1.3. Let's switch to Eclipse and see what we need to change in our application before being able to update it on the Google Play Store. Presuming that you made all the changes to your app, like adding new features or redesigned the user interface, you will need to increase the version number of your app before being able to update it on the Google Play Store. The changes need to be made in the Android manifest.xml file. So I will open that file and in the application panel we can find the current version number or version code of the application and the version name. While the version code represents an integer used internally by you, the developer, to keep track of your application version, the version name represents a text shown to the user of your app. We need to increment both these values. We increment the version code with one and uh, depending on the changes that you made to the code, you can also increment the version name with one or if there have been major changes to your app, you can update its version name to two. If the changes made to your app are not significant, you can change this number to 1.3.1. I will simply update it to 1.4 in this lesson. If we switch to the text view of Android manifest file, we can find these values at the beginning of the file, at lines 4 and 5. One last check before generating the signed APK is to update the target SDK version of your app to the latest Android SDK available at this time, which in my case is 21. I'll save the file and will generate a new signed APK by right clicking the project and selecting Android tools and then export signed application package. I'm then asked for the name of the project, which is Smart Unit Converter. Then we get to choose between using an existing case store or creating a new one. It's important to notice that if you want to update your app on the Play Store, you'll have to use the same case store as the one that you used before when signing your previous versions of your app. You won't be able to update your app if you want to use another key, so it's important to save the keys in a safe place. I will then browse to the location containing my key store and will select it. I'm then asked for the password associated with that key store and will click next. Then I get to choose the alias for the key and again will need to enter my password. By clicking next, we are asked for a destination folder for our APK. For simplicity, I will save this file on my desktop and finally will press finish. After a few seconds, the export Android application window disappears and if I switch to my desktop folder, I can find the APK file. Next I'll get back to my Google Developer Console page and we'll need to upload the newly created APK file. I'll make sure that production is selected so I will upload the APK to production. I'll then browse for my APK file and we'll select it. As soon as the APK file is uploaded, we receive a warning telling us that the Google Play Services library that we are using in our project is only available for Android devices that are running the, the API level 9 and above. We will fix this warning shortly. Next we can see the version code that we specified in the manifest file and the version name. Currently the API level is 4 but we need to change this to 9 in order to be compatible with the latest Google Play Services library. So back in Eclipse, we need to change the min SDK version value from 4 to 9. By doing this, we will exclude all the devices that are running the Android SDK versions between 4 and 9, but these are pretty old versions, so the number of excluded devices will not be high. 
After saving the manifest file, we will need to generate again the signed APK, so we'll repeat the step performed earlier. We right click on the project and select Android Tools Export Signed Application Package. Then we select our project, we specify the password for the keyword that we want to use, the one that we used earlier. Next we enter the password for the key. We choose to override the output file located on my desktop and we click finish. Now that the new APK has been generated, we switch back to Google Developer Console. We cancel the earlier upload as we will use a new APK. We repeat the steps to upload the new APK to production by browsing for the APK file and upload it. And as we can see, the warning displayed earlier is gone. Now the version code is still the same, 5, the version name is 1.4, but the API level value was increased to 9. By changing the API level value, we removed 277 devices that were compatible with our app while the API level was 4. But as explained, this is not an important issue as there are pretty old devices and the number of these devices is not high. There are still over 8000 devices that are compatible with our app after the update. You can specify the new version changes or what's included in this update and finally by clicking publish now to production you will update your application. As with any app publishing procedure please allow a few hours to pass before being able to find the new version of your app on the play store. So to summarize, in this video we discuss how to update our app to a new version on the google play store. Thanks for watching and see you soon.